I'd like for you to open your Bible to 2 Chronicles chapter 24, verse number 4, where we are going to recap the story we ended on yesterday from the 2 Chronicles source. Got the same information, maybe just slight differences in the detail. And the event we're talking about is the attempts by King Jehoash of southern Judah to get the temple repaired. It had suffered damage and loss uh, in the years since it was built. Uh, We're talking about almost 150 years since it was started. Uh, But it had suffered particular loss recently under the usurp reign of Athaliah, who thought she'd killed off all of the descendants of David but had missed this young man, Jehoash, because his aunt, the sister of the late king, was married to the high priest, Jehoiada, and the couple, his aunt and uncle, had hidden him away in the holy place or in the holy uh, sanctuary area, not in the holy of holies, but in the temple complex, until... Uh, he was old enough that they could declare him as the legitimate king. Well, here we are uh, a couple of decades into his leadership, and Jehoash decides it's time to get the temple fixed completely. So 2 Chronicles 24.4 says, After this, Joash, that's a shortened form of his name, decided to restore the house of he who is. And he gathered the priests and the Levites and said to them, Go out to the cities of Judah, gather from all Israel money to repair the house of your God from year to year, and see that you act quickly. But the Levites did not act quickly. So each year they were supposed to collect um, a, a couple of shekels from each adult male for the upkeep of the house. And apparently had not done a good job of that. So Jehoash is sending them out to take care of that. And even when they were taking care of it, apparently some of that money was disappearing. It was being misappropriated. So verse number six, the king summoned Jehoiada the chief, that is the chief priest, and said to him, why have you not required the Levites to bring in from Judah and Jerusalem the tax levied by Moses, the servant of he who is, and the congregation of Israel for the tent of testimony? Uh, For the sons of Athaliah, that wicked woman, had broken into the house of God and had also used all the dedicated things of the house of he who is for the Baals. So this is where we find out that Athaliah did apparently have some sons that were not evidently from this royal line that she had not killed off. And they had... Uh, gone in with her to taking funds out of the temple storage and uh, using them to uh, worship their own gods, Baal and Asherah. Well, all that's done now because that whole group has been been executed. And now Jehoash wants this temple repair taken care of. So the king commanded, and they made a chest, and they set it outside the gate of the house of he who is. Now, in the king's passage, it said that Jehoiada was the one taking care of this. So um, uh, the uncle, high priest, and the nephew, king, cooperated in making a secure box to keep the funds in and to account for. Verse 8, or verse 9. Uh, The proclamation was made throughout Judah and Jerusalem to bring in for he who is the tax that Moses, the servant of God, laid on Israel in the wilderness. And all the princes and all the people rejoiced, and they brought their tax, and they dropped it into the chest until they'd finished. And whenever the chest was brought to the king's officers by the Levites, when they saw that there was much money in it, the king's secretary and the officer of the chief priest would come. They would empty the chest and take it and return it to its place. And they did this day after day and collected money in abundance. Uh, Doesn't mention here, but this box is also guarded 24 hours a day uh, by security. And the king and Jehoiada gave it to those who were in charge of the work 
of the house of he who is, and they hired masons and carpenters to restore the house of he who is, and also workers in iron and bronze to repair the house of he who is. Remember, the temple's almost 150 years old. Uh, so those who were engaged in the work labored, and the repairing went forward in their hands, and they restored the house of God to its proper condition and strengthened it. So they even updated it a bit. Uh, so now it's back to its glory. When they had finished, they brought the rest of the money before the king and Jehoiada, and with it they made utensils for the house of he who is, both for the service and for the burnt offerings and the dishes for incense, and the vessels of gold and silver. Those probably also went missing uh, over the uh, years, uh, particularly under uh, Athaliah. And then they offered burnt offerings in the house of he who is regularly all the days of Jehoiada. So everything now is back up to where it's supposed to be in the kingdom of Judah and on the temple mount. And so now we will leave the southern kingdom functioning properly, moving along smoothly, and go to the northern kingdom and see what's happening there. And for that, we need to go to 2 Kings chapter number 13, verse number 3, where we take up uh, the fact that this king of northern Israel is a wicked man. He's still continuing to worship the golden calves and encourage that worship amongst the people of northern Israel. And so, as is often the case, God responds. 2 Kings 13.3, The anger of he who is was kindled against Israel, and he gave them continually into the hand of Hazael, king of Syria, and into the hand of Ben-Hadad, the son of Hazael. Now, this is kind of weird. Um, Hazael is the guy that assassinated. Now, he did it quietly. He, he smothered him in his sleep. Uh, he assassinated King Ben-Hadad so that he could take over the kingdom of Damascus, Syria. But now we find out that his son is actually named Ben-Hadad. Maybe named after that king when he and Hazael were getting along, uh, but uh, this Ben-Hadad will be the new king of Syria after Hazael is gone. Now, this is a, a complicated situation here because uh, Damascus, Syria is the closest neighbor on the north to northern Israel. And after Hazael took over, he invaded and annexed the whole eastern side of northern Israel, from the Golan right on down to uh, the borders with Moab, all the eastern side of the Sea of Galilee and the Jordan River Valley. And then immediately right behind that, uh, he was invaded by the Assyrian king Shalmaneser and became tributary to him. And the Assyrians did even greater atrocities against the uh, Israelis than the Syrians had done, which helps explain why people like uh, Jonah from this time period really despise the Assyrian people. Uh, for all practical purposes, the Assyrians were the Nazis of that day. They treated every non-Assyrian as if they were just cattle, uh, as if they were just resources to be used up at their own pleasure. But uh, we find out that Israel is coming under this judgment because of the sin of Israel. And so, when they repent of that sin, God is going to um, respond. So, verse 4, Then Jehoahaz, uh, he's Jehu's son, the, the new king of northern Israel, uh, sought the favor of he who is, and he who is listened to him. For he saw the oppression of Israel, how the king of Syria oppressed them. 
And therefore, he who is gave Israel a savior so that they escaped from the hand of the Syrians and the people of Israel lived in their homes as formerly. Now, we don't know who this savior is, some sort of military figure, no doubt, uh, that was able to at least recover some of that territory. And uh, that's going to be mentioned in relationship to Jonah later. Uh, Nevertheless, they, meaning the northern Israeli people, did not depart from the sins of the house of Jeroboam, which he made Israel to sin, but walked in them, and Asherah also remained in Samaria. So they keep on worshiping the golden calves, even though they say that they're actually worshiping he who is by means of the golden calves, and they're also allowing the female deity Asherah to have worship occurring in Samaria. Now, is that the country of northern Israel by Samaria's name, or is that the capital city? Doesn't matter because it just tells us that uh, false worship is still being allowed to happen. Verse 7, For there was not left to Jehoahaz an army of more than 50 horsemen and 10 chariots and 10,000 footmen, for the king of Syria had destroyed them and made them like dust at threshing. So they were very, very weak, and yet God still gives them assistance in order to um, survive the oppressions of the Syrians and the uh Assyrians. Well, now we have to say goodbye to another king from northern Israel, and that would be the guy we were just talking about, King Jehoahaz. So verse number 8 of 2 Kings 13. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoahaz and all that he did and his might, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? And so Jehoahaz slept with his fathers, and they buried him in Samaria, and Joash, or Jehoash, his son, reigned in his place. And so we end up with another period of time where the kings in northern and southern uh, Israel, that is northern Israel and southern Judah, have the same names, and it can cause for some confusion if we're not careful. So we've got two Jehoashes, one in the north and one in the south. Uh, Verse number 10, a little bit more information. In the 37th year of Joash, king of Judah, Jehoash, the son of Jehoahaz, began to reign over Israel in Samaria, and he reigned 16 years. He also did what was evil in the sight of he who is. He did not depart from the the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which he made Israel to sin, but he walked in them. So we still can't get rid of this false worship of he who is by means of the golden calves. It just keeps on going. 2 Chronicles 24, verse 15 now. And this brings us to the year 808 B.C. So we have, in a short period of time, passed over quite a few decades. And mostly what we've talked about is invasions from the north, from Syria and Assyria, and uh, changing uh, uh, kings from time to time in both the north and the south. But now we have to see what happens when the high priest Jehoiada dies. Verse number 15 of 2 Chronicles 24. Jehoiada grew old and full of days, and then he died. He was 130 years old when he died. Uh, So that means that Jehoiada was born very shortly after the split between the two kingdoms, uh, because we are now in the 135th 135th year of the kingdom of northern Israel. Uh, So Jehoiada was only born five years after all that happened. So he's seen a lot of history, and he's been the high priest in Jerusalem at the temple over a lot of it. And he's been a good man and protected the Davidic line. So they buried him in the city of David, 
among the kings because he had done good in Israel and toward God and his house. So one of these days, the archaeologists are going to be able to find the royal graveyard on the uh, eastern side of the ancient city of Jerusalem. And uh, if there are uh, names mentioned uh, in these tombs, uh, they may have come across the high priest Jehoiada being in this graveyard. Uh, but here's the problem, and this is why we're here. Verse 17. Now, after the death of Jehoiada, the princes of Judah came and paid homage to the king. And then the king listened to them, and they abandoned the house of he who is the God of their fathers and served the Asherim and the idols. So after this strong, great figure of a high priest, Jehoiada dies, the leadership of the nation of Judah, the princes would mean those that are part of the the noble family, families, they're, they're somehow related to the leadership families. They come to Jehoash and they say, you know what? We need to go back to worshiping a wide variety of gods and goddesses because that's better for us. Yeah, we can keep on worshiping he who is, as a very significant God because he got us out of Egypt and everything, but we also need to worship Baal and we need to worship Asherah and we need to put back into place the idols devoted to all these different gods and goddesses. And this is horrendous that this is being suggested. And even worse that King Jehoash goes along with it. And because of this, God's wrath falls upon the southern kingdom. It says, Wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem for this guilt of theirs. And yet he sent prophets among them to bring them back to he who is. These testified against them, but they would not pay attention. So this is going to kind of mark the beginning of us seeing prophets come up, not just simply in northern Israel, which is in rebellion against God, but in southern Judah. And many of these prophets will leave behind written instructions, written uh, judgments and prophecies that will become part of the Jewish canon, that is, the Jewish written word of God's rule, of God's law. And so that's why we will soon be adding into our studies a lot of the prophetic books. Let's now go on to, uh, well, first, uh, we, we've got to read this next part. Sorry, I almost went away too soon. Verse 20, then the Spirit of God clothed Zachariah, now, this is not Zechariah, the uh, prophet later in the Old Testament, but Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada, the priest. So this is Jehoash's cousin that he probably has known uh, very well all his time of growing up. So he would have been in line to be the new high priest. So Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada, the priest, and he stood above the people and he said to them, Thus says God, why do you break the commandments of he who is so that you cannot prosper? Because you've forsaken he who is, he has forsaken you. So Zechariah, once he gets wind, that these guys are agreeing to abandon the proper worship of the one and true living God. He stands up in front of the assembly and calls them to account for it. That if you do this, you will bring God's judgment upon you. In fact, it's already here. He's getting ready to judge you. 
Now, they should have repented under his prophetic witness, but they don't. It says that they uh, conspired against him, and by command of the king, they stoned him with stones in the court of the house of he who is. So the king, Jehoash, makes all the arrangements to arrest and try and condemn his own cousin, the son of his uncle, the high priest, the late and great Jehoiada, and to have this man stoned to death as if he were an enemy of the temple and an enemy of the people of Judah. And verse 22 has commentary from one of the prophets that's writing this section. Thus, Joash the king did not remember the kindness that Jehoiada, Zechariah's father, had shown him, but killed his son. And when Zechariah was dying, he said, May he who is see and avenge. So, as Zechariah is being killed, he prophetically issues judgment or call for judgment against his cousin, the king uh, Jehoash, uh, that he will be brought down uh, by God's judgment. And it won't take very long before that happens. But before we do that, uh, we need to uh, see what happens in the north. Uh, It says, at the end of the year, the army of the Syrians, so they're the guys north of northern Israel. But remember, they've annexed and are controlling under Assyrian domination the whole eastern side of the Jordan Valley, which has now turned the Syrians into near neighbors of the kingdom of Judah. And so, at the end of the year, the army of the Syrians came up against Joash. So they crossed the Jordan go past Jericho, and come up to the capital city of Jerusalem. They came to Judah and Jerusalem, and they destroyed all the princes of the people from among the people, and they sent all their spoil to the king of Damascus. So, all the guys that came to King Jehoash and said, we need to start worshiping all the other gods and goddesses, they're all dead now. Because the Syrian army crossed the Jordan and came up to Jerusalem and killed them off and uh, took their stuff. And then, uh, verse 24, though the army of the Syrians had come with few men, he who is delivered into their hand a very great army. So apparently the kingdom of Judah tried to defend themselves, but God was against them. And many Israelis, many Judeans died trying to stop the Syrians from coming in Uh, because Judah had forsaken he who is the God of their fathers, and thus they executed judgment on Jehoash. And when they departed from him, they left him severely wounded. So even Jehoash is harmed or hurt uh, in the invasion of the Syrian army against Jerusalem. And this is all the judgment of God that we're seeing happen here, and it's still not done. Uh, For the next part, uh, we read uh, the rest of verse 25. His servants conspired against him because of the blood of the son of Jehoiada the priest, and they killed him on his bed. So this is all happening within a year of the death of Jehoiada the high priest. Jehoiada is dead. First thing that happens is Jehoash and the other leaders of Judah, they decide they're going to start doing the worship of other gods and goddesses. When Zechariah, his cousin, tries to object to that, he makes arrangements to have him executed by stoning. And then they get invaded as God's judgment 
and many of his compatriots are killed in that invasion, and he's hurt in that invasion, and their stuff gets taken, and when the Syrians pull out, the Judean servants are so angry at this rapid change of affairs in Judea that they assassinate uh, Jehoash on his bed, kill him because he'd killed uh, Zechariah and had not honored the memory of his uncle Jehoiada the high priest. At this point, we shift over to 2 Kings chapter 12, uh, verse number 19, to get the uh, overview of the transfer of power. It says, Now the rest of the acts of Joash and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah? His servants arose, and they made a conspiracy. And they struck down Joash in the house of Milo on the way that goes down to Selah. It was Josachar the son of Shemiat, and Jehozabad, the son of Shomer, his servants, who struck him down so that he died. And then they buried him with his fathers in the city of David, and Amaziah, his son, reigned in his place. And then uh, we have the summary uh, of uh, Amaziah in the 14th chapter of 2 Kings. In the second year of Jehoash, the son of Jehoahaz, king of Israel, Amaziah, the son of Jehoash, king of Judah, began to reign. He was 25 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jehoadin of Jerusalem. Now listen to the next part. He did what was right in the eyes of he who is, yet not like David his father, he did all things as Joash his father had done. Uh, so, this guy starts out well, and we'll have to wait to see how he finishes. Uh, he, he doesn't take away all the high places. He still allows people to do some of the things they shouldn't be doing. But at least he starts out worshiping he who is alone. <laughs>